Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chi Zhou. I'm the CEO and founder of QuarkChain. So today, I will present uh, Bazon Consensus, a uh, scalable uh, blockchain sharding consensus. So here's a brief introduction of me. I used to work at Google and Facebook for their infrastructure, working on distributed large system, uh, especially high performance system. Um, then we found blo blockchain, which we believe a lot of decentralized solutions can be applied to the uh, blockchain area. So that's why I moved to uh, this kind of sharding area. OK, so probably everybody knows that blockchain is right now suffering from low transaction per second. Uh, for example, like Bitcoin roughly delivers uh, eight, roughly seven transactions per second, and Ethereum is roughly deliver uh, 15 transactions per second. So this low transaction per second greatly limits the wider applications of blockchain. So there are a couple of solutions that aims to address this security problem. And one solution is probably to just to increase the block size of the, uh, of the blockchain. For example, Bitcoin Cash increased the block size of Bitcoin from one megabyte to 32 megabytes, so that you can claim 32 times performance improvement, which is about 200 transactions per second. However, increasing the block size will also increase the block propagation time, which means that the probability of stale block of Fox will be increased, resulting in wasting of hash power or also further security concern. In addition, if there's a lot of computational transactions such as smart contracts are put into the large blocks, if we want to perform this transaction in a limited of time, then we need considerable computational resources. Another solution which basically employs multiple blockchains. However, it immediately faced another issue called hash power dilution, where suppose all these N chains employ the same proof of work hash algorithms, then there exists at least one ch blockchain has at most one over M hash power. I suppose M equals 100, that is one over 100 hash power. This means that an attacker can easily perform a double spending attack to revert a transaction on one of the blockchain and greatly compromise the security level of the blockchain. A further issue is interoperability issue. For example, a user have a token in chain zero want to perform a smart contract on chain one, and this kind of cross-chain transactions will be extremely difficult to perform. So to address this problem of both large block size and multiple blockchains, we propose Boson consensus. Well, it, it is a two-layer uh, blockchain consensus where it consists of a short, short layer which contains a list of homogeneous chains, or we call shards. And it processes the transactions uh, in, this, in the blocks, similar to multiple blockchains. And to address the hash power dilution issue, we introduce a root chain which just does not process any transactions, but it describes the canonical chains of all the shorts by including the, the headers of the shorts into the blocks. So, so here actually is, is an example of the ledger produced by Boston Consensus, where we have two shorts which have the hash pointer linked to the previous block. And for the root chain, besides the hash pointer linked to the previous block, it also has the hash pointer that points to the uh, headers of the uh, short blocks. So now we have n plus one chains. And how we can uh, produce the block in these chains, and which means that we have n plus one consensus that can be run independently. For example, root chain can run its own consensus for example, proof of work with total difficulty as the is fork trust rule to produce block, and can also run, for example, deep post or post, as long as its body is valid, which means that including the canonical chains of the shard blocks. And each shard can also run its consensus, such as proof of work, proof of stake, or deep post, plus a, a, a consensus called root chain first consensus, so that all these blocks in the shard can be protected by the root chain. 
So what is root chain first consensus? Basically, suppose we have two sharp forks. Before comparing these two sharp forks using their local consensus, we will first reverse look up their longest root chain, include this uh, sharp fork, and to find which one should be selected based on the root chain consensus. And suppose a root a sharp fork has longer root chain uh, fork, then it will be selected no matter how, how long another sharp fork it is. And if they have the same, they are, have the same sharp, uh, roof chain fork, then the local consensus will be applied. So with this root chain first consensus, we can derive a very important property of the Poisson consensus, which says that any double spending attack on a sharp block that is included by the root chain must also attack the root chain. This means that the security level of the sharp block is also guaranteed by the root chain. So for example, here attacker tried to revert the selected chain, SHA-0, of these three blocks by creating a longer uh, fork. However, this double spending attack will never succeed because its corresponding root chain block, which is this one, is shorter than the selected chain, which is this one. So in order to perform a successful double spending attack, the attacker must also create attacking fork on the root chain where he consists of three blocks, blocks versus these two blocks, and includes corresponding attacking sharp fork in order to perform this attack so that all these blocks will be reverted. However, this kind of double spending attack will be much more expensive just perform a double spending attack on sharp fork. So Poisson consensus actually share a lot of similarities and differences with existing solutions. So one famous solution is called a merge mining, where a miner mines the main chain and also auxiliary chains simultaneously. And if they reach the difficulty of any chains, then just broadcast the block of a corresponding chain. However, it has two requirements. First is that the auxiliary chain must be using the same hash algorithms. And second is that once they reach multiple difficulties of different chains, all the blocks must be produced synchronously, which gives a lot of pressures to the network bandwidth. While Poisson consensus, first, any sharp block can use any hash algorithms, and all the blocks are produced asynchronously which significantly increase the utilization of network bandwidth. Another famous solution is called Ghost, which selects a canonical chain by taking account the total dif the difficulties they call uncles or fox. It increased block rates. However, since those transactions can be overlap in the canonical selected chain and also the fox, the transaction rate is also still be limited. And the, the ledger actually produced by Boston consensus is actually essentially a DAG or a well-structured DAG. However, it tried to harvest the benefits of both blockchain and DAG. So one great property is that suppose two DAG that produced by Boston consensus we can easily tell which one to be selected so that the security model is well defined. Unlike existing, some of the existing DAG solutions that it depends, the security level is not well defined and highly depends on node configurations. And it also achieves higher throughput compared to single blockchain because all the blocks, sharp blocks, root blocks, are produced asynchronously and so that it can utilize network bandwidth more efficiently. And so previous, <coughs> sorry, previous side we focus on more theoretical side of Boston consensus. So we also have now we moved to a more engineering side. So we implement this Boston consensus as uh, in the quark chain, which is the first implementation, and using the proof of work as the major consensus. 
the root chain using the proof of work with is a hash, and the shards can use the proof of work with all kinds of hash algorithms, which we have this test lab has been running for, I think, more than three or four, four months. And we also enable clustering, which allow different processes to run different shards independently and communicate with each other with RPC. This greatly allows to, to enhance the capacity of a full node, but just, just add more machines into the network. And with this, uh, so the, all the code here are open sourced, and we using the 6,000 nodes to run this clock chain, and we, are, can, we can demonstrate to achieve more than uh, 14,000 transactions per second using Ethereum type of tran balance transfer transaction. And our community members using the open source code, and the, the highest number they can get is more than 50,000 uh, transactions. So besides scalability, another, there are also other major topics, important topics of, of Boston consensus. One is that how to design the token economies so that the root blocks are incentivized to include the, uh, the root chain, uh, the sharp block headers as much as possible. And also, suppose the, system, the network is reaches its capacity, how we are able to add more shores in flight without stopping the network. And we also have several topics in terms of enhanced security, so that any shards can be immediately, once it, it joins the network, can immediately uh, be protected by the hash power of the root chain, suppose the root chain runs proof of work, which we call it a hash power reuse technique, which is inspired by the code reuse techniques that are uh, commonly used in software development. In addition, with Boston consensus, we can demonstrate that it can achieve very highly efficient cross-chain transaction. And the security level of the cross-chain transaction can be the same as the in shard transactions in terms of the possibility attack. And the further topics in terms of is the homogeneous shards, where the shards can run different consensus, can also run different, for example, virtual machines, ledgers, or even token economies. So there are a lot of space can be explored uh, in this area. Okay, uh, thank you very much for attending my uh, presentation. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. So you mean when <laughs> when there's a device join the network, we, how to decide which shard it, it, it will runs? So right now, currently, we are uh, only enabled like a full, full full node that is join the network, which means that this node can this full node must uh, process all the full ledger. However, it can separate this full node into different sub nodes. Um, however, we, we inquire the sub nodes to be uh, to trust with each other. So they are able to uh, process all this uh, uh, shard, uh, shard data or also root chain data uh, within we call it cluster. Are you developing any uh, D apps along with your clock chain? Do any you, do D apps, decentralized applications? Yeah, <laughs> good question. So right now, the system is more like Ethereum style, so that it can support like uh, uh, Ethereum uh, virtual machines. And from a user perspective, it will, similar to use Ethereum, for example, I can do any transfer, balance transfer, no matter it's in shard transaction or cross shard transaction, or smart contract calls that, no matter it's the smart contract reside in the local shard or, or remote shard. Um, so this is our first step. And future step, as I said, like we are able to enable heterogeneous shards 
Um, so we are able to, for example, incorporate latest, for example, virtual machines and also consensus, for example, like depots from user uh, experience wise. Um, so there are a lot of space we can explore here. Um, so um, I don't think there's a limit there. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much.